Good morning, y'all. It is day 140. And I am leaving Trapper John Shelter pretty early in the morning. So uh, I left the shelter at a uh, quarter to six. And the reason being is that there ended up being at least eight people at that shelter and they're all headed to the next shelter where I'm going as well. And it has limited tinning. And I think it's only a six person shelter. So somebody's not gonna get a place to stay. And so I decided to get the, the jump on everybody. I was the first one out this morning. They were all just waking up when I left. So that's the way it goes when there's this many people Plus, you've got people that I don't even know about that'll be going south. And they might be staying there as well. So, it could be a lot of people there. Uh, it is not very far. It's only 11.2 miles, but there are some up and downs. And again, it's the only place around there. It's so rocky, you really can't camp just anywhere, like in a stealth spot. So, yeah. That's going on this morning, but it's supposed to be pretty and the sun's just coming up, so that's nice. Uh, but it is gonna be some rough terrain, so that's why I wanted to get an early start. Um, that's about it. Um, I should possibly get in there around pretty early, like uh, one o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the terrain. Um, so, yeah, let's get going. Today, I'm crossing over the Grafton Turnpike, which was incorporated June 21st, 1804. It ran 35 miles connecting Hanover, New Hampshire to Andover Turnpike. The New Hampshire Turnpike system was created through Turnpike Corporations, which built about 500 miles of toll roads and more than 80 turnpikes in the state from 1796 to 1830. These turnpikes, built by private corporations, sold shares to the general public. The money raised was used to construct these toll roads. The actual term turnpike refers to a barrier which was built across the highway to be opened only after the required toll was paid. 
These toll gates were set up about every mile. A typical charge in those early days for a horse and a single rider was one penny. Eventually, other easier roads to market were constructed, railroads were introduced, and toll roads became somewhat free and owned by the various townships. It remained this way until the advent of motorized automobiles and then tolls reappeared in the 1960s. Well, uh, day 140 is coming to a close, and I uh, made it here to uh, the Hexacuba shelter. Uh, not a long mile day, only about 11 and a half miles or so, but had to get over Smarts Mountain, which was, uh, total ascent for the day was like 3,600 feet, so it's pretty steep, uh, a lot of roots, a lot of rocks, you know, that's the way New Hampshire is. So, uh, yeah, a shorter day, but um, pretty tough. And uh, got some decent views up there at the top. We went over Smarts Mountain as well as um, Lambert's Ledges. Yeah. So, um, did that. And uh, this morning, I left at like quarter to six, pretty early. And there was another hiker coming after me and um she was about 20 minutes after i left and saw her later on and she said as she was leaving she saw a uh, uh, mother bear with single cub so uh, i didn't see him obviously 
but I was about 20 minutes before they uh, came across the trail, but she said she saw me. She was leaving the shelter. But uh, I saw deer, but really no other wildlife today. And that's about it. Pretty day. Um, good weather. It was in the 70s. Wasn't too hot. So uh, that was a, that was great. And uh, that was about it. You know, just a few views here and there. Just a solid day. And then uh, tomorrow, uh, we will get out of here and uh, go further tomorrow. I think it's about a... 14 and a half mile uh, going into uh, hostel, hikers welcome hostel. So um, that'll be good. Get cleaned up and uh, get some uh, real food and then kind of figure out what we're doing from there. Uh, the next day is Mount Musalak, which is the real mountain that kind of introduces us into the White Mountains uh, that's coming up. And um, it's uh, only nine and a half miles over it and to the other side but most people say it takes about 12 hours to do that so it's a pretty tough mountain so we'll be doing that day after tomorrow and uh, we'll there's another hostel on the other side of that so we may end up staying at a hostel tomorrow night as well as the following night and maybe figuring out some slack packing as we get closer into the the um, white mountains and the presidentials which are the, the big ones and that's about it so yeah, day 140 is coming to a close here at Hexa Cuba Shelter. So that's it. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye.